Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we are doing the what's next on Jaime Minguia, the former super welterweight or junior middleweight world champion from 154 pounds, following his first pro loss to the undisputed super middleweight champion of the world, Canelo Alvarez, as they fought on May 4th in the main event of a pay-per-view card. Now before we get into that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel, I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. Excuse me. So, Munguia, you know, really showed a lot of heart. He had his moments in the fight with Canelo. He just got outclassed against a better fighter, you know, but I think Munguia does have a bright future. I really do. Um... I used to think he was overrated, but he showed a good account of himself against Canelo, and I think um, he's got a, you know, he can he can do well in the future. And now the big question, though, following his first pro defeat, is what's next for Jaime Minguia? So let's run through the top 10 and see what are the top fighters at 168 and see what could be possible. We start with... Um, you know, obviously a rematch with Canelo is not going to happen. He he didn't perform well enough or, you know, I, I don't like to say well enough, but he didn't make the fight close enough for him to earn uh, to get a rematch with Canelo. So that's not going to happen. Then we look at David Benavidez. David Benavidez. I would love a fight with Benavidez for Munguia. I would. Benavidez is moving up to light heavyweight, though, in his next fight. And honestly, if... Canelo's not going to fight him at 168, then I think Benavidez is probably going to um, probably gonna stay at 175 if he beats Oleksandr Votsik. Um, and that's, you know, that's not a guarantee. Votsik is very good. So um, that's going to be interesting. But I don't, I don't think the fight would be, um, would be, would happen uh, towards, you know, before the end of the year or next for Munguia. I think he'd want to look at other options to come back from following uh, this loss. Then we look at Caleb Plant. I, I really do like the matchup with Caleb Plant, but Golden Boy would have to work with the PBC. I don't see the two sides coming together to make the fight, even though I do really like this fight. I don't, I don't think um, I don't think it's a fight that's going to happen next for Munguia. Uh, John Ryder has retired following the loss to Munguia this year, so a rematch with him is obviously out. But a rematch with Sergey Derevinchenko, I think that would be really good for Munguia because Derevinchenko's with Golden Boy anyways. So why not come back and go against the guy that went toe-to-toe -to -toe and gave you a fight of the year candidate back in, um, back in 2023? I mean, I think Munguia would like to prove that he's better than that. I think uh, Derry Vinchenko wants to run it back. I think that would be a good, good opponent for Munguia to come back against. And I think that definitely could happen because nobody's re nobody else is really knocking down the door uh, for Derry Vinchenko right now. Then you got David Morrell Jr., the undefeated WBA regular champion. Um, Morrell is also making his light heavyweight debut. Um, he's doing that August 3rd on the Crawford Madrimov undercard. Um, not sure if he comes back down to 168, but he's also a PBC guy, and I don't see the PBC and Golden Boy working together for this fight. And I don't really don't think Munguia would want this fight next anyways. Um, then you got Demetrius Andre. He's also with the PBC, contemplating moving down to 160. You know, maybe Munguia would would be interested, but I, I, I just don't see it next, to be honest. Then there's Christian Mabilly, undefeated, uh, you know, top contender on the rise right now. Um, he's returning at the end of this month, staying busy. Uh, it's a good fight, good matchup, but it's also top rank working with Golden Boy. I don't think they come together next for this fight. Then there's Edgar Berlanga. Um, Berlanga is in the Canelo sweepstakes right now. If Berlanga were, does not get the fight with Canelo, I would love to see Berlanga and Munguia go at it. I think that's a good fight to see where Berlanga is. I think we kind of see where Munguia is right now. And now he's fought the best. He lost. 
Now we want to see how he does against the other guys in that division. And Berlanga is trying to prove himself as well. So I think it's a good matchup, to be honest. And I'd really like to see it. But I'm leaning towards the less likely. Um, and then there's William Skull. He's the IBF's number one ranked contender right now. He actually was just ordered to fight Canelo next. But um, I don't I don't think Canelo's going to fight him which means he would get a shot at the vacant title, but it likely wouldn't be against Maguia. So I don't see this fight happening next. Diego Pacheco, number two in the WBO. Good matchup right here. Um, you know, both golden boy guys. Would Oscar want to do this fight next? I don't think so. I think they'd want to build Pacheco up a little more and not put Munguia in against a stiff test like Pacheco in his first fight following the defeat to Canelo. Um, Vladimir Shishkin, I think he has ties with the PBC. Um, I don't see this fight getting made, but I do like the matchup, but I just don't think it gets made because of the promotions. Um, Eric Bazinian, a uh, Canadian fighter. He's uh, actually, I think he just fought at the beginning of the month. Um, I'd like to see it. He's undefeated, but not sure if the two sides could come together. But, uh, but it's a decent matchup. Um... You know, Padre McCrory lost to, um, what's his name, Las Dagger Berlanga. I uh, doubt Munguia would be interested in a fight like that, but he might, you know. Uh, as he comes back, he might not want to fight a big-name opponent. Uel Hernandez, another guy that's not a big name but potentially could get the crack. And then uh, Rohan Murdoch and uh, Bektamir Malakuziev. Um, not seeing those ones, so... For Munguia, I, I really think he should come back against a guy like Derry Minchenko would be perfect. I think he's either going to come back against him or he's probably going to do like a um, a, uh, a tune-up bout, you know, to shake off. But I honestly think Munguia has put himself on a pedestal to where he doesn't, he shouldn't come back and fight tune-up guys. He should fight top 10 guys at all times now. You know, and challenge himself at all times. That's where he's at as a fighter, in my opinion. Does he do that? I don't know. But after Canelo, that's what he should do. He should know that he's on a different level now, and he should be fighting top-tier guys. And to be honest, Sergey Derevchenko would be a perfect matchup for him. He's with Golden Boy. They had a fight of the year candidate last year. Shake off this loss. Come back late in the year, and give Derevchenko that smoke again. I think Derevchenko absolutely earned it. A lot of people think, thought he won the first fight. So I think it would make a lot of sense. And again, not, not a lot of people are knocking on the door for Derevchenko. So why not give him the opportunity? So we'll see what happens. But that's it. That's what I got. That's my what's next on former junior middleweight champion Jaime Minguia following his first pro loss to Canelo Alvarez on May 4th on pay-per-view. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.